substance use disorder, drug misuse, so many names. I will use addiction to refer to a biopsychosocial problem where people are trapped in a cycle of abuse that devastates the person, the family, and the community. So what do we know about addiction? Addiction is not simply a disease of the brain that can be fixed with medications. Though there is a biological side to addiction, it is also a cause and consequence of discrimination, poverty, and social isolation. It is a disease of despair. So if we truly want to address addiction, we will need solutions that also address discrimination and promote health and equity. We can begin by better understanding discrimination in an effort to restore humanity. Take my life partner, Brandon, as an example. He's a white man raised in poverty by a very young mom. Over time, his family was able to accumulate wealth by taking advantage of the GI Bill, loans, saving accounts, and working very hard. In his late teens, Brennan became addicted to heroin. Often on homeless, he spent a lot of time in a marginalized black neighborhood where he couch surfed. He hustled to feed his addiction with a black friend who was poor and shared the same disease of the brain. Yet their experiences were remarkably different. Brandon recovered without a single criminal conviction. He has been clean since 2004. His friend went in and out of prison and died young from an overdose. Unfortunately, Brandon's story illustrates the grim statistics of inequities in addiction. Blacks use and sell drugs at similar rates or lower rates than whites, yet they face much more severe consequences, including disease, death, and incarceration. So how did Brandon recover? If addiction was a disease of the brain, it would have been medications. Indeed, he was on methadone and suboxone. The meds helped, but what really got his addiction under control was a bunch of different things a network of loving and committed family members who refused to give up, money to pay for seven residential rehabs plus outpatient treatment at the cost of ten, tens of thousands of dollars paid by his family. It required experienced lawyers that helped Brandon get off his possession charge. It required white skin and green eyes with a pop of charm, wits, and the right joke at the right time. Brennan lost count of how many cops and prosecutors let him off the hook. It took him over 10 years to get off his addiction. His black friend also had a network of loved ones who refused to give up. He had wits, a sense of humor, and a pop of charm. But that was not enough to get him, get him off the hook. You see, he didn't have an entire city to support him. On top of hustling to find his medicine, as they called heroin back then, he struggled with poverty. He did not get a break like Brandon did because his black skin made others view him as a criminal, undeserving of second chances. Justice and generosity are not colorblind. Addiction is hard, but for people of color in the US, it is hardest. The point I'm trying to make here is simple. Addiction is much more than a disease of the brain. It is a biopsychosocial disease of despair rooted in discrimination. So can we fix this? We might, but we will need to address discrimination, poverty, and build a cohesive, tolerant community. To heal and thrive beyond addiction, people need to have something to lose. They need a sense of meaning in life, love, safety, hope, respect, and be able to contribute value to the world. I'm a social worker born and raised in Brazil and an expert on addiction. Reflecting on my personal and professional experiences in the field of addiction, I grew frustrated with the American system that addresses addiction as an individual disease. 
So influenced by a Brazilian educator named Paulo Freire, and in collaboration with colleagues, service providers, and people struggling with addiction and discrimination, I have been on a mission over the past 20 years to find more tolerant, loving, and effective ways to heal the devastation of addiction in the communities most impacted by inequities. With the Newark Community Collaborative Board, or NCCB for short, we developed CommunityWise, a peer-delivered group intervention that includes nine weekly sessions lasting two hours each. People struggling with addiction meet with a peer facilitator to reflect deeply about their lives through a social equity lens. We use illustrations of day-to-day -day struggles and historic trauma to elicit critical dialogues about how demographic characteristics, cultural beliefs, discrimination, history, policies, and organizations interact to impact individual and community health. Participants develop and implement projects to improve community health, such as writing letters to their representatives, joining fundraisers to improve community health, or forming community gardens to increase access to healthy foods. You get the point. I'd like to highlight Eric Anderson, who gave me permission to talk about his trajectory. He participated in one of the very first community-wise groups back in 2013. He was in his 40s, Black, poor, and like Brandon, struggled with heroin addiction throughout his life. Unlike Brandon, Eric did not get breaks from cops and prosecutors. He was in and out of prison and joined a study hoping to change his life. Between 2013 and 2021, he became a deacon in his church, a community-wise peer facilitator, a member of the NCCB, and he testified in Newark City Hall to advocate for the Bend the Box Bill, seeking to reduce employment barriers for people with a history of incarceration. Eric still struggles with pain and with his health, but he's off heroin and he has found meaning in his life. He's proud of who he is today. More importantly, he's a passionate advocate for the health of his community and he uses critical thinking as a tool to be a more effective advocate. Have we fixed the problem of addiction? No. However, CommunityWise has made a difference in many participants' lives and in the city of Newark. Over 700 people have participated in CommunityWise. In a large randomized clinical trial funded by the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities, we found that community-wise participation had 74% larger reduction in substance use over five months. The cherry on top, the entire program can be delivered for less than $200 per person. In the words of community-wise graduates, just because you see a person in the way they are, you can't judge them by whatever because you never know their situation and how they get there. Just like the illustrations in the pictures, take a minute, stop, pause, and analyze before you make a judgment. This is what Community Wise is designed to do, to pause and reflect in a quest to understand the underlying currents of addiction in one's life and community. Only then can we find solutions that create a more equitable world for all. So in closing, I want to leave the audience with two questions. One, what are you doing to heal addiction and promote equity? And two, what is one thing you can start doing today? Thank you for listening.